What's happening, weirdos? This is the incredible, one-of-a-kind, hilarious Miss Pat. I'm so glad I've known her. Uh, here and there, we've run into each other. Our paths have crossed over the years. She is incredible. I'm, fi- I'm glad we finally got to sit down and have a long-form chat. Can't wait for you to hear. Here is a little taste. Powder is for you. We That's don't right. use powder. That's right. Black people smoke crack. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm the example of whiteness, but I'll. I take mean, I'm it. just saying that. I you're sitting across from yeah, me. Yeah, no, I get saying. it. If there was another white guy, we could have gestured. Well, I can say her name. She's yeah, white. Katie. Since you want Katie to feel loves bad. going skiing. If you know what I mean. What? She does a lot of coke. Oh, I don't believe that. The Miss Pat Show is three seasons of hilariousness. It's on BET Plus right now. Check that out. And if you'd like to see something I am up to, what am I up to? I am on the road. If you want to see me do stand-up comedy, go to PeteHolmes.com. I am coming up in New Orleans, Dallas, Houston, Milwaukee, Madison, Wisconsin, Royal Oak, Michigan, Minneapolis, Minnesota, New York, New York, and Ridgefield, Connecticut. I will be adding some new dates as well. Tickets for all of those dates will always be at PeteHolmes.com or follow me on Instagram. I'm always tweeting, tweeting. Yeah, I tweet on Instagram. I gram on Twitter. It's just something I do. Uh, But I'm always sending out those links. So check that out if you want to see me uh, live or if you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, go to Largo-LA.com. We had to postpone the one in March, unfortunately, due to a shooting conflict with a TV thing I'm doing. But May 4th is the next one in uh, Los Angeles. Go to Largo-LA.com for that if you're going to be in the LA area. All right, everybody. That's all I got to plug. Enjoy this chat with the one and only Miss Pat. Get into it. <laughs> Tate, you can put your shoes on it. Sit like that. I'm not putting my shoes on because somebody got to help me put them back on. I'm good. No, don't take them off. You put, you put your shoes on. No, Pete, counter. this is how fat people sit. No. Yeah, I, Pete, saw I bre- can't do that. Who the fuck you saw do that? Bert Kreischer? He, he, I'm telling you, he was rushed to the emergency room after. He did what now? <laughs> he was rushed to the emergency room after if he was sitting like you. He can't sit like this. Oh, no, he no, cannot. No, it'd take a lot of stretching before this. You can't be lounging like I'm painting your portrait the whole time. Oh. Here, here, take this one. We're going to at least prop you up properly. Yeah, prop me up. There you go. There you Jesus. go. Okay, there you go. All right. How do you, how's that feel? Ah. <sighs> Like I want to go to fucking sleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great big. I'm a big person. You're a big person. This is our couch. <laughs> yeah, this is a deep. If you seated with no brown and no, no hair on, <clears throat> when you just relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're. I thought you were pointing out that I today am not wearing a bra. Oh, that's just me. Okay, these well, are the good. ABCs of me. Well, some I don't. <laughs> hey, this is California. Y'all get to be free here. So, <laughs> are you? Do you live out here? Hell no. Where are you? Are you? Sick? I'm in Atlanta. You're in Atlanta. I was just there. When? Where was I in Atlanta? What was the venue called? You was performing there. I know because I saw something. Yeah, I was performing in Atlanta. And um, I, I, I can't remember the name of it though. But I've been all over Atlanta. Uh, Laughing Skull at Winery, City Winery. That sounds right. Yeah, I think yeah. it was at City Winery. Like a six hundred something, like a mid. No, no. That wasn't no, no, no. Okay. I know I saw you come into town. I, I know yeah. that. I asked everybody, I'm gonna ask you. You're from Atlanta. hmm I was like, what is Atlanta? I asked a lot of people in Atlanta. I was like, what is it? You know, like you say, like, what's Chicago? They're like deep dish pizza, oh. mustaches, white socks and cubs. You go, like, name any city. You could say fucking Orlando. People would be like, well, Disney World, we got like swamplands. Then I'm like, what is Atlanta? What is Atlanta? Uh, Tell me what it is. Lemon pepper wings, sweet tea. Okay. Soul food. Yeah. Uh, I like you, lemon pepper wings. I haven't heard that you're yet. You're talking about the white side, white people, stadium, hot dog. With sauerkraut. I like know. that you're you're reading my Eastern European. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. Sauerkraut on a hot dog. Thank yeah. you. And is it is it a segregated place? It seems no, like no. no it's, I, it's, it seems know, very diverse. It's I mixed. Li- I lived in Indiana for 15 years, and I was blown away by the segregation. I'm like, why don't y'all live out here in Plainville? And it's like, oh, it's too white. I said, but the school system is awesome. 
crimes. You know, I just, I was shocked. That's I, the premise of your show. You really lived in Indiana? I really lived in Indiana. I didn't know. And why did you go to Indiana? My husband worked at General Motors. Okay. So and he, when I moved to that little small town playing field, I was like, money separate. I mean, money separates you in Atlanta. Yeah, okay. In Indiana, they were separated. It was a whole like mixed people. If you was if you was had a mixed child or you was a mixed couple, you lived in Fishu. If you was white and, and middle class. <laughs> I'm sorry, class, there was a mixed race area? I swear it was. <laughs> it was Fisher, Can I see Indiana. You? Yeah, Fisher. We're going to put you in Fisher. If you have mixed parents, yeah, or so, you're rich. Yeah, uh, so Plainfield was like middle class, and Geist was for the super rich. Okay. And uh, Indianapolis, uh, that was just for poor. That was for black. Poor black. I ain't going to say poor black. I thought you I'm said gonna say, I'm going to say. Did you say poe? I did say poe. I heard poe. Uh, it was a few. I just don't want it to sound black. like I was making no, up no, no. Paul Black. It was just, it was just so like you knew it's, it was crazy. Where I don't think there's an area in Atlanta for for mixed race couple. They just everybody just live everywhere. Right. But if you went well, to actually, fish you, it was a lot of mixed race couple in in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, that's one of the things that I noticed and liked about Atlanta. I don't know if that's true of Georgia as a state, but Atlanta for sure. There didn't seem to be lines like there are in Chicago. Chicago is very segregated. It's like certain bus lines, certain oh, parts yeah. of you town. Chicago so segregated, you might not wear the wrong colors and cross the street. You mean gang affiliation? Yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I sound like the NPR <laughs> like subtitles. Yeah. Miss Pat means gang affiliation. I uh, <laughs> when I play Chicago, I used to play the uh, the little club downtown. Zanies. Zanies. I never. Yeah. I never left the area. Yeah. Okay. I because always stayed right in there, my hotel, and I just I don't. Well, go you were out afraid anywhere. of Old Town Chicago. No, I just stay in my fucking room. I figure if I'm in my room, can't nobody snatch me, can't nobody kidnap me, can't get killed, and I ain't getting no straight bullets that didn't belong to me. I'm gonna stay in my fucking room. <laughs> if you get a bullet, you want to make sure it was for you. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. At least make sure it was intended. I you. would just. I'm. I'm not lying. I love I, Chicago. is a beautiful place, but it scares me. Yeah. Like I can go to some other place like the Mon Hour hour when nobody really goes and just and I'm okay. Yeah. But I, I think it's because of all the shit that you hear on the news. Yes. I I don't come down. outside in Chicago. Yeah, a lot a lot happens in Chicago. I mean, big city. Big city, yeah. Big city. A lot isn't happening. Doesn't get reported. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people. I mean, just Atlanta the, the same way. I mean, look, look, we 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 got gangs and shit too. Yeah. So I stay on my side of the road there too. And did you move into? Um, you've had a lot of success. I'm assuming you got a nice place. There's beautiful houses down there. Tell oh, me about yeah. I didn't want to live around a lot. I didn't want to live where all the celebrities live. So I just went down to the country part of Georgia and bought me seven acres and built the house. Seven acres? Yeah. What? That's huge. Uh, to me. Yeah, Seven? y'all don't get shit up here. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> my my manager <laughs> Seven me. acres, though, you have people that work on it. Like, you're not keeping the no, land. No, no. Like, some a, a staff has to take care of seven acres, right? No, my family. I mean, I just built a big house. Yes. And I've built the podcast studio because you know I podcast. Yes. Edit and that so, out. We're not plugging your podcast. Well, That's not what okay. we're doing. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, it's called, tell people what it's called. I'm 100% joking. Uh, uh, the Pat Down. The Pat Down. Pat. Right. So yeah. I built a podcast studio next to my house. Oh, you recorded there? Uh, well, it, the house is still being built. Okay. So I just bought seven acres and had a house there, and I'm a DIYer. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do this shit myself with no subcontract. I'm going to be the contractor. Just you. And I went out and hired an architect, and I learned a lot. It gave me a headache, but I'm still building to this day. Did it make you realize why they have subcontractors? I don't know why they have some contract. They, I didn't want to give them 10% of my budget. I understand. <laughs> but do you, do you never regretted it? You're like, I'm glad I'm doing this? Like, it's all I'm, funneling through you. Yeah, I'm glad I'm doing it. Now, it's not going as if I had a If I had a contractor, yeah. um, it would probably move a lot of lot faster. Yes. I had a lot of changes because I, I was so excited to be doing a, a house this big on my own that it was things that I left out. So when the house started to get built, I was like, no, I need another set of stairs. No, I need an elevator. No, I need this. And he's like, you ever heard of change fees? <laughs> oh, that's a thing. <laughs> yes, it is. You're like Tommy Lee in the beginning of Tommy and Pam. Did you watch that? Mm -mm. Yeah, was, they were doing their own house, and he was like, "I need a rotating water bed and stuff like that." And they were, and the contractors hated them. Yes. That, that comes, do you really have an elevator in your house? Yeah. Like a service elevator? 
No, no service elevator. Like it's a big ass I'm, elevator. Yeah, I'm 50, so I figure if I'm there. Oh, for it's for another, you. It's not like to no, load stuff in. It's, no, no, it's no. For it's you. just for my family. For, I got it. It's really for me and my husband to go upstairs and slap the shit out of the kids. Yeah, if sure. you don't feel like using the steps that day. Well, you don't want to be winded. Oh, I will be winded. No, it's by the time you're done. Yes, because the slap won't ha- won't won't feel as hard. <laughs> so if I take the elevator, which take a half a second, less than a minute to get up there, I could beat the hell out of the kids and come on back downstairs. God help you if the kids figure out how to like short the elevator and stop you, so you have time to like calm down. Like they'll stop you mid floor. I'm glad they don't listen to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know that. I reach no, all types. Uh, no, they don't. They, they're pretty young. <laughs> okay. These are the ones you adopted. Yes, yeah, these are the ones I adopted. From your the niece. Young, the oldest is 14. The youngest is nine. And you, I've heard you call them your, your crack your My crack, crack babies, babies. I'm yeah. not making that up. And and they're, uh, how were their ages? Four and nine? No, they are uh, nine, nine, 11, 12, and four, 13, 14. There's five of them? There's four. Oh, 9, okay. 11, 13, 14. Oh, I'm sorry. I messed up. So how's how's that going? Are, are they, is it? I've had them for 10 years. Yeah. So it's going pretty good. This is my last <laughs> set. I'm not taking care of nobody else's kids. I told my family, fuck y'all. All y'all kids can jump off a bounce and I'm done. <laughs> what I'm, what I'm, was I'm, the decision like though? I mean, so your niece was struggling with addiction. Yeah, I picked her up one Christmas. Uh, I went home to celebrate the Christmas with a side of the family that I don't fuck with. I don't know why God tricked me. He was like, you need to go spend Christmas with your mama family. I'm like, God, you need to stop fucking with me. <laughs> and, you know, he just kept saying I need to go down there. And so I go. Why? Why did he want I mean, you to go down there? I don't know why God. Do you God, think it had something to do? I mean, you were coming I, up? No, for, well, let me let me back up. Tell so me. I'm I'm... I'm riding on 285 in Atlanta one day, and I get a phone call, and it's my niece, and she said, Auntie, I need some pampers for my baby. So I said, well, where are you? She said, I'm on Callan Road. How about my next exit was Callan Road? I get off at the exit and go to this crack motel. I mean, I've it's been a while since I've, it's been years since I've seen a, a true crackhead or either just dealt in drugs. I didn't even know people still live like that. Scared the fuck out of me. I take her some pampers, and then the other sister called me. You thought maybe is, the technology would advance. Like everything else is Well, I thought advancing. people had stopped selling pussy, stopped, got off drugs, you know, found something else to do. I'm glad we circled back. I, yeah. I interrupted for that little <laughs> gem. Yeah, but but the culture hadn't changed. You no, had been it, out of it for a long time, but there it was. Over 20 years. Still over doing years. it, but doing it the same way. Same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then my other niece called and said, well, can you help bring my kids something to eat? So I go over to a hotel, and there's my niece in there, pregnant with a third or fourth child, and got three crawling around on the floor. And I was like, well, she was like, my boyfriend got arrested for armed robbery. I said, well, he going to be there for a while, because they usually keep him. So just come on and live with me. And Wait, she, you made the choice then and there? Well, I was just trying to help, you know, hoping that she said no, and she said no. And I was like, whew, I did my fucking part. She said no. <laughs> you did an empty gesture? <laughs> like, you're like, I can help you move, but with four kids. and well, But she said no. She said no. So okay. she gave birth to the baby on November 28th. And I had set up Christmas to go visit. And by this time, she had moved in with some people that didn't want her. And my my cousin uh, was like, please take her. And I ended up taking her. And I was like, oh, Lord, you done tricked me and shit. God, why you do this to me? And so she wasn't even there a year. And she ran off. Oh, that's how it happened. Yes. And I went and got full custody. Because I was going to give them, I was going to put them in the system, but I had had the baby since she was two weeks old. Yeah. And the baby was just starting to walk. You know, by this time, I love the fucking baby. Yeah. So I just can't go drop the baby off. Yeah. So I said, okay. I said, God, why you do this to me? And i never forget this, Pete. <laughs> A voice whispered in my ear and say, keep them, and I got you. <gasps> and my whole life changed. Tell me about this voice. Please tell me about I, this I swear voice. it was the voice of God. You know, yeah. everybody hear different things. But, but was it, did it seem like outside of yourself? Like it sounded it like was. my voice, like here it was, in the room? It was, a, it was, I don't even want to say it was a male voice. It was a warm voice. Yeah. And it, but and it wasn't just in your head. I, I, it wasn't not, in my head. By the way, it could be in your head. It wasn't Who's in my head. Who's to say God doesn't talk in her head? I never wanted fucking kids. Boop. 
It was. It, you it, needed an external voice for a life change this big. <laughs> Can I say, last time I was in Charlotte, the woman who drove me was an all black woman car service. It was called like Pink Boots or something. It was it was amazing. They drove me Can to you turn off? and from the airport. Anyway, she was telling me, I was like, why are you still in Charlotte? And she was like, her mom was there and she was standing in her bedroom and she heard God's voice. And I said the same thing. I was like, was it an external voice? And she was like, yes, it was. So yeah. this voice is going around and making people move I back mean, to their mom's hometown. Town and, and adopt four kids? That's a big deal. Well, better know, be an external voice. No, they came to Indiana. I brought them to Indiana with me. Okay. And we all just moved back to Atlanta. But, you know, I wasn't going to keep those kids. I I mean, I was I was really working hard to get a comedy career off the ground. I was doing okay. Um, and I just didn't, my kids was grown. My kids was getting ready to graduate. My last two. You were just going to be done. I was going to be done. I was yeah. going to be free, just me and my husband. I love how honest you are, by the way. Everybody else would be like, and you know, they're beautiful children. Oh, and no. Was, and no, you're like, no, I don't want no. them. No, <laughs> I didn't fucking want them kids. And I tell people all the time, I, I love them, but I didn't, I didn't want them. But they mama. It's honest. It's yeah, honest. I mean, it's honest. And then I put them in school, and I fell in love with them. And I'm like, well, she every child, you know, we can't pick our parents. And to me, for coming from where I came from, every child deserves to start off on a solid foundation. Yeah. Now, you get if your child fuck up their foundation and break and crack it, it at least you can say they beginning was was solid. Yeah. Because I know my beginning wasn't solid. Right. And I know what I went through with having a crumbles up under my feet. So I was like, you having know what? a what under your feet? Crumbles. Crumbs. What? Break, break. I don't fucking know. I just want to make sure I understood crumbles. that you said crumbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you try to walk away, but you crumble. It's no, Macy Gray famous. Crumb Creek said. is all broken and no, no fucking foundation, Pete. <laughs> I had no foundation to stand on. <laughs> I wasn't calling you to question what you said. I yeah. just well, I'm here I, to listen to you. I love that. If she laughing, I made up the word. Usually crumbles. when she laugh, I made up the word. Is crumble a word? Yeah, crumble's a word. Oh, crumble. Okay. okay. Zero. Jasmine knows. It's good. Yeah. You I and, and it's the right word. You grew up in a rough situation mm -hmm. and that had to inform, that had to open up your heart why you well, wanted that to was do a, you know, that wasn't my first set of keys that I raised. That was like my fourth set. What so does that I was, mean? You have your biological kids. And then I had my sister-in-law kids. And then I had my uh my sister kids. And then I had my um uh, I had these kids. Okay, then you can say whatever words you want. And I'm gonna say, you know what I mean? So, like if you're raising four sets of kids. And, and I'm I wasn't I wasn't even I don't even think I was 35. I wasn't even 25 and I had already raised two sets of kids. I don't know. Or three sets of kids. You're like a superhero or something. You, I was a damn fool. <laughs> you also, see, when I heard that you ra uh, took in your niece's four kids, I assumed your your train had already come in show business wise. No. You were still trying to make it. Yeah. It Tell me what's that look like if you're going out on a weekend and now you got these four kids. You know, my daughter was in the, my daughter was a senior, I think. And excuse me, she was getting ready to um, graduate, and she wanted to go to HBCU. So when I brought my niece in, who was still on drugs, but I didn't really know it because I had got a job, got her clean, taught her how to drive, bought a car, everything. You taught her how to drive? Mm-hmm. Okay. Got her glasses. Got by. I, I've never seen a human being, and I'm not fucking talking about my niece. Well, yes, I am. I took her to the dentist, and they pulled 18 teeth. I said, Shush. bitch, you only got 32. No, 18. They pulled 18 teeth. That's more than half. I'm I'm I, doing the math right now. Well, I, it's a lot. I don't I, I don't know how the fuck did you even open your eyes with eighteen raggedy ass teeth in your mouth, and and, and it was a rush to get them pulled because she was on Medicaid. So I was like, can you get them all pulled? You know, she got a job now, but her her health care of them kicked in, but she's still on Medicaid. So you know, the the least they can do when you're on Medicaid is pull them. So they pull all her fucking teeth. Did they give her fake teeth, or she's just walking around? They was all in the back of her mouth, so she was able to chew. Like a bunny rabbit with the fur on her teeth. Will you stop it? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> she nibbled? She became a nibbler only. No, she became a hoe only. <laughs> More of a hoe, because I got them rotten teeth out of her mouth. She could suck dick without a jaw hurting. I can't. I can't. <laughs> yes, on this premise. <laughs> she, <laughs> she used to have a toothache all the time. It's hard to suck a dick with a toothache. Oh, no! Yes. No! You can't... When no, your teeth hurt. Don't act it out. <laughs> don't 
don't say it's hard to suck a dick with a toothache because that's going to be your YouTube quality. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be. It can't be. They'll block it. They'll block it. Yeah. That, so, okay, so they took out most of her teeth. You yes. got her glasses. How was that? How were her She's eyes like, doing? She's like, really? She has a kid that had the same sight. She cannot fucking see it all. So I ended up getting her glasses. I bought a cosign for her car. Help her got a job. You know, thinking she on the right track. But somehow, crackheads find other crackheads. And she found where the crack was in Indiana. And so I had got her an apartment and everything. And she just fucking gave it all up and said, I'm going to go get myself together. And so when I called Defects and asked them to help me, they wouldn't even fucking help me. They told me, well, the kids are, aren't in danger. You got food in the refrigerator. So they weren't worried about it? No. Because you were there. But they were like, technically, she didn't abandon the kids. I was like, yes, she did. These kids did not come out of my vagina. She abandoned these fucking kids. And they was like, no, the house looks safe. Y'all got grocery. We'll see you later. Wow. That's incredible. And then they told me I could get a check for $235. What the hell is $235 going to do for uh, four kids? Uh, two of them can share half an iPod. <laughs> <laughs> an old iPod. Too. An old one, yeah. The one that whirred when you turned it on. <laughs> yes. So, you could get that one. You know, I ended up keeping them. They're doing great now. And when you would go on the road or something, what, what uh, was... Oh, I was telling you about my daughter. Yeah. She was getting ready to graduate. She was going to go to HBCU. But when I got... When the mama left, my daughter was like, I'm not leaving my father here with all these kids. So she chose to go to college at home, which was... Uh, she went to um, Purdue. Okay. Which is... Um, she did the online The classes. chicken college. Yeah. So she went to chicken college. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> She went to there, and I think she did Ball State online, and she ended up getting both of her degrees. And my son was in high school at the time, too. They, so they just stayed home and helped raise the and kids. And they would help. That's nice. So, yeah. and because doing, getting where you are in comedy, hard enough. Yes. <laughs> impossible. Yes. It's impossible. Like, I don't know if it's impossible. It's but very it's hard. difficult. So, to do it with all of these other things going yes, on. Yes. Yes. And also to come where you came from. Before we get into that, because you've told that story a lot, so I'm going to try and ask you things you haven't been asked. Okay. I always feel like George is a spook, like a like a scary place in the in the haunted spiritual way. You ever see a ghost? <laughs> no, I've never seen a ghost. No ghost. No. You would be who I would want to see a ghost. If somebody was going to no. see a ghost, I would like to see your reaction to a ghost because uh. it would be hilarious. <laughs> I really. There's some people and I'm let like. Let me say this to you, Pete. Tell Any me. black people. Reaction to a ghost. Well, this is what will be hilarious. This is what David Blaine has figured you, out. Yeah, you yeah. will walk Magic. up and be like, "What? Well, what kill you, ghost?" I'd be like, "Hell to the fucking no, no, no!" And we be getting the fuck out. White people, y'all be like, "So what kill you, ma'am? And what century are you from? You don't need put put the fucking ghost on your lighting eye, a candle on your on your podcast. I don't got the fuck out." <laughs> what about psychics? Any anything ever happened to you? So let me. I got a psychic story. Tell me right? your psychic story. So my daughter to, tells me right, and I know you remember this. So she's you know before Bob Saget passed away, we became you know you I talk to him all the time. Yeah, well, you know, really. Yeah, what a I, sweetheart. Um, I didn't put it out there after he died and then like that. You know, he came to my house for dinner and we would talk like he did a little work, a little oh, light work. You were like, I don't have a contractor, Bob. You got to earn your keep. Can you help me nail some nails? No. I just, I just <laughs> talked to him all the time. And we went out to dinner a few it's times. It's just a comedy riff. And so I my daughter's... Get... Shut up, Pete. Okay, sorry. I don't know what the fuck you talking These about. These riffs aren't helping. So, That's the name of the show. These riffs aren't helping. Uh, my daughter go to a psychic, right? Uh-huh. Right, right at the, uh, a couple of days after, she, my daughter's talking to this damn psychic. So she tells me, she said, Mama, the, the psychic said Bob Saget died from... A heart attack. I said, what fucking psychic? And so then she tells me, then she tells me, she sent me this thing. She said, you've been burping, burping a lot. And I said, yeah, how you know? And so she was like, the psychic said that you have a spot on your lung. Scared the shit out of me. Done sent me fucking, um, was it a spot? She done sent me all of these pictures that the psychic sent her, right? What, he's and drawing them? No, like colored pencil sketches. Like it's somebody. It's like she said, "This is where." So she sent me a rib cage and said, "Right here is where the doctor need to look." Really? S scared the fuck out of me. I go into the doctor. I say, "My daughter went in to a psychic, and the psychic say I got something going on with me. It's right here." So the doctor looked at the the, the scan and said, "Do you have stage four cancer? Cause that's what that is." I said, "What the fuck?" She paid this bitch five dollars. 
<laughs> and the lady would give a five t- charge a five dollar every time she talked to him, and just done send her something right. And then when I googled this image, it was straight off the internet. Oh my god! And I cussed my daughter the hook out. Time, but mama, she be helping the police find dad. But I said she don't do shit. She read the article before y'all do and act like she know the information. Oh my god! So yes. this is not a good psychic. Is that before Bob passed? No, that was like the day of, the day oh, after he passed. And, he, and they were and saying she was like, it was a hard Oh, it was a hard attack. I said, what are you talking about? So that is also foundless. Foundless? No, yes, because you know, we would have been thinking about it. That's what everybody assumed. It was a heart attack. Right, right. But I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, how did they even know I knew Bob Sagan? But the lady, you know how they, when you easy to fucking manipulate out of five dollars at a time. <laughs> Um, bitch done told me I had cancer. Let, the man said, ma'am, this is stage four cancer. And this person got to be dead. This is really bad. Oh, no. I done took the scan into the doctor. You're not listening to me. He was like, no, you're not listening to me. Tell, okay, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm glad I asked you for your psychic story. I know I'm going to jump a little ahead in your story that it was a um, it was a, a social worker somebody told you you should do mm-hmm. or your caseworker told you you should do stand up. Yeah. Tell me the story of the first time you did stand up cuz that had to First time I did stand up. What did you talk about? And what did you know about it? I know you know now. You've been doing it a long time. But when you're just starting, we don't know anything. So what what was Miss Pat like the first time you went up? And you're like, my caseworker said I should do this. The first time, I, well, she, well, you know, it, it stayed in my head when, you know, when somebody said, oh, you should try something. So I got my girlfriend that lived around the corner for me. I said, look, I really want to try this stand-up comedy out, you know. And my neighbor was always edging me on, too. So I said, I said I'm going to try this stand-up comedy. I said, if it don't work and they don't like me, because I had, went, I started going to the comedy club in Atlanta back in those days. You can go Monday through Sunday. Mm. Every day of the week, there was some type of open mic or something. And you would go and watch? I would just go and watch. Yeah. I would just go and watch. Nobody knew I wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to see That's and learn. That's always the best advice. Just yeah. go and watch a little bit. See what it looks like. And see I them do the for, same act twice. That's I nice. went for six months. Watching. Just watching. And so finally I got the courage up and I told my friend, I was like, let's just go up to this little place called The Pub. And it was near my house because I lived in Riverdale and, in, and the little pub was in Morrow. It's a little bar. And I went in there and I signed up for open mic. And, um... I was so fucking scared, so I started drinking Coronas, and I don't even fucking drink no beer. (laughs) And it was this white girl in there just showing her ass, and I went in there. Wait, what? What? Just (laughs) acting a fucking fool. On the stage? No, just in the audience, drunk. Okay. And so I started off with the first joke I ever told, which my brother was a, a professional cat burglar. And we used to break in people's houses, but one day he kicked in somebody's door, a little old lady sitting there watching, like, Price is Right. And he was like, freeze, bitch, I'm the FBI, and snatched her TV, and we ran out the door. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) That was the very first. I need some oxygen. That was the very first joke I ever told. Is it true? Yeah, it was a true story. That's the first news report you ever gave. <laughs> like you, well, you pretty it. much. He, pretty he much. kicked at the door, said freeze with the FBI. Yeah. Took the TV. And two black kids just running there and snatched this little old white lady TV and run out of the door. Oh, and she's like, the FBI needed to seize my television for an important case. <laughs> I don't case. know what the fuck she said. We didn't look back. <laughs> this is like when me and my friend Opie stole our first Playboy. My job was to distract the clerk. So you were basically the me in that situation, and the other guy was the Opie, who actually stole the magazine. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was the easier job. Well, <laughs> He's think, kicking. He's yelling. I think while my brother was picking up the TV, I was unplugging it while she was just like, what the fuck Which is, is going on? Which is an important job. The unplugger is very important. Very. Try and do that heist, that scam, without someone to unplug the TV. Exactly. See how far you go. <laughs> okay. so, I, so that did it work? Uh, yeah, my brother always <laughs> broke in people's houses. That's how we got school clothes and... Food and you know shit like that. We, you know, he, he, that's what he did. You go to work, we kick your dough in. And you went with him. That was something. Yeah, I, I needed pamper money. So if I got things like, um, if we, if we, it was probably thirty years ago. Yeah. So, um, oh, well, I've been married thirty years. Probably forty years ago. Wow. So I had one child at the time, and my child is now is thirty four. <clears throat> So if we needed stuff like school clothes or money or, you know, we were... He was Basics. Still, we were still stuff. Like, right. I would go in there and, like, steal detergent, pamples, if they had any, you know, go in their refrigerated food, whatever, mm. Mm. you know. And we, we what we got, if we can sell, we sell. Right. It wasn't Catherine Zeta-Jones going underneath the lasers. This was like a crime of necessity. You needed basics. Yeah, we needed basics. And how do how are you getting in? 
kick my right brother hook. was a good my uncle when he was a kid taught him how to pick locks that I would never let anybody my uncle was taught my brother how to pick locks I never forget he started with the lock in your hand mm-hmm. and he showed him how to pick that then it went to door locks then it went to I mean it went to bedroom door locks yeah then it went to uh Door regular door locks. Yeah. So my brother could pick a fucking lock like nobody, no other. This was Dimitri Martin. I think had a bit about this where he's like, "What is the code of like the ethical code of locksmiths?" Because they teach you in locksmith school how nah, to break my into uncle any. Taught, my uncle yeah. Peanut taught my brother. I know Peanut. No, you don't. You might know a Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> what, what peanut played on Fat Apple? said that dead serious. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't know my uncle. <laughs> I don't know your uncle Peanut. But he learned. Where'd he learn? I, I, I don't know. I guess, you know, from, I grew up in a bootleg house. You learn a whole bunch of shit. So a maybe my granddaddy. House? What were you bootlegging? My gra- I didn't bootleg shit. My granddad so moonshine. Like real bootlegging. Yeah. Yeah. Real bootlegging. That Not guy. like DVDs on Canal Street. Oh, no. This was with full, this was with full electronics. <laughs> The internet used to just be moonshine. That that's yeah. all people had. I remember we used to have a number man that came to the house twice a day. You could play the it, it's lottery now, but you could play the number in the daytime and you could play it in the evening. Mm. And my granddad would look in the look in the newspaper. And you remember the peanut cartoon? I know peanut. I told you. Oh, shut your ass up. <laughs> I got Jasmine. I got Jasmine. <laughs> and you take a uh, mic. You take one of those little micro. Uh, sky, what is those things? A hold up to your eye? Huh? Yeah. Magnifying glass. Yeah. And he would get the numbers out of the peanuts, the cartoon. You what can he, still do it. Wait, what? He, what? <laughs> I need help. Okay. He, the so, peanut comic strip. Well, how would that have the lotto strips, numbers? Uh, I don't know how they put them together, but but old people do this. They take the comic strip and they get a magnifying glass, and you look, put your look in that category. Yeah, and it's all types of numbers hanging off of those. Uh, really, off those cartoon characters. I swear my hand to God, go do it. So my mama would play like. <laughs> you mean in the drawing? In the drawing, so there'd be like a it'd seven. It could be in the hair. It in the it hair. It could be in the eye. It could be in the hands. You just gotta know what you're looking for. So as a kid, we would they would give us magnifying glass and we would look through the cartoon and try to pick out what the number was gonna be that day. Did it ever work? Yeah, my granddad used to hit for fifty cent. He'll win a hundred dollars. My mama used Off to win. Off the peanut a- strategy. Yeah. So peanut people used still peanuts? use the comic strip to 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 get the lottery numbers. I did not know this. Because you don't know enough black people, Pete. I know lots of black people. Well, you don't know nothing that been looking at Peanut. <laughs> you don't know me. I'm going to teach know. you some shit. I love it. I, I just it well, reflexively you, was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> get a magnifying glass yes. and look in the comic strip. Yes. And a lot of people in the hood, that's how they get their lottery numbers. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's how they used to get their lottery numbers back in the day. Yeah, there might be a new way now. Maybe no. it's Marmaduke now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's Marmaduke now. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, just try it. When you get a chance, get him a magnifying glass. Get the comic strip out of the newspaper, the daily paper, <laughs> and look through that I bitch. I don't know why this is the funniest thing that anyone's ever I, told I'm me. I'm surprised you never heard of it. Yeah. You never heard of that? Well, she a different type of black person. <laughs> <laughs> she had family. <laughs> 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 yeah, if you have family that goes, what are you doing with a magnifying glass and peanuts? Yeah. They stop you. Did you ever break into a house and it goes sideways? Something go wrong? One time my brother broke in the house and um, uh, I was just sitting in the car and the homeowner came up and threw a, and, and threw something at us really big. What was that? I ain't going to say because the person might hear you and he remember. Really? Mm-hmm. But he threw something Damn big. It. I'm, I'm I not through something, but almost damn near killed me, and I never went back. Wow, and you're still. I think the statute of limitations is is you're clear. I'm pro- I'm quite sure I'm clear. But you're worried that this man might be insane and, and come find you. That man was pretty old, so he's probably dead by yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what would he throw? <laughs> Him and my brother just started shooting at each other, and I'm ducking in the car. I was like, Lord, if you make this, you you help me get out of this shit, I'm never going again, and I never went again. Oh, so this guy caught you breaking into his house and gunfire caught, broke yeah, out? Yeah, for him and my brother, because my brother always had a stolen gun. And then he shot back? Yeah. Yeah, that's always... And I think the man didn't kill us because we were young black kids. Okay. He and made he a, was black. He made a judgment call. Yeah, he I think like, that's why he didn't kill us. It was like shoot to wound. And he didn't shoot. He didn't see me because I was in the flow board. 
I disappeared. I was like, if I get out of this shit, and I had a baby at the time. Right. And I was like, let me tell you something. I just get my pamper some other way. And did you? Did you make good on that? Uh, yeah, I started. Vow? I started working at a place. It's like before the Waffle House, a place called the Huddle House. What was it? Huddle House. Okay. You never heard of the Huddle uh, House? Uh, Most people haven't. Huddle House. Huddle House. You're right. I, I guess I, I don't know enough black people. What is going on? <laughs> no, it was before the Waffle House. Okay. So it, was so the it predates. House. Was it yellow with the black letters? It was orange. Okay. You ever heard of Huddle House? See, Jasmine's got my back every and every step of the way. <laughs> But it was a place called the Huddle House, and I used to do waitress in there. Okay. And I would get off at 5 o'clock in the morning and still try to go to school because I had a baby. Wow. You'd work all night? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Catch a little nap? Yeah, probably in school. I ain't learned shit till later on. Oh, my God. So you stopped You stopped breaking into houses, though? Yeah, I stopped. But your like, brother keep doing it? Yeah, my brother was a professional thief until he ended up going to prison. For that? Okay. I don't know what the fuck he went to prison for. Half of the time we don't talk to each other, so I don't know why he was in jail. But he went for a long time. Well, you never know when he might pop in. Well, he's out now. He was a home burglary, Joe. Like he might break into your house. <laughs> what the fuck he gonna break in my house for? I know him. <laughs> no, he'll rob you right to your face. He'll just ask for some money. Uh, no, he, he didn't never rob me. <laughs> no, I know. He's too old now to do all of that shit. But, you know, we did that crazy shit when we was kids. What did you go to prison for? You've been to prison. Yeah, I went to jail for <clears throat> selling drugs. Selling drugs. Mm -hmm. Here's here's the only question that I've thought of ahead of time that I've asked so far. I've, I've thought of other ones, but this is the first one. What do people get wrong about prison? You watch TV about prison. People talk about prison. You were there. What's what? What did they get wrong? How is it different from what everybody says, or is it not? What do people say about it? Horrible. Yeah. You know what makes me mad about people today? Like I've people getting up... jumped constantly in the in the shower. Well, I didn't see all of that. Yeah. What What makes me mad about people today that go to prison and you know. Um, I, I did I did all my crime when I was young. The ones who, who wants, who thinks they're at a hotel. In prison. Yeah. They There's... have the audacity to complain. Uh, you wouldn't be in this situation if you wasn't in fucking if you didn't commit a crime. Right. So now, I'm not saying you go and you beat them and you mistreat them. They're still human beings. Sure. But, like, they have the right to write in. If, like, my son was a, my son was a correction officer, right? Uh, in Indiana, and the, the 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 things people were right in. One guy wrote in and tried to sue the state of Indiana and my son, and said my son knowingly came to work with COVID and gave him COVID, and sued. Well, he tried. He tried. I, well, it, I it didn't go anywhere, but just dumb shit like that. Did they he, write grievances? Did he uh, give him COVID? No, my son fell out time he got COVID. <laughs> Them motherfuckers gave my son COVID. Right. Yeah, prison and COVID, not a good time. Yeah, it wasn't a good time. So yeah. my son got COVID. When my son caught COVID, when people was dropping dead and we wasn't even, and when when Trump was denying COVID was real. Right. He caught that shit. I At the never, scariest time. Yes. When, when they picked him up from the house, from, from the jail, I lived across the street from the jail. They called me. They was like, come get your son. He's not feeling well. So I get up there. His eyes is bloodshot red. And I was like... And I kind of touched him. I was like, he, he, he's hot. They was like, you should take him to the house. I'm not picking up no hot nigga. I said, y'all better call 911. Mm -hmm. So they, they call 911. They don't say shit. They jump out the back of the ambulance with, with a hazmat suit on. Scared the shit out of me. Like Breaking Bad. Threw his ass in the ambulance and everybody get back. And asked me to hold his jacket. I said, I want this fucking jacket. You better throw that shit in there with y'all. And I didn't his see my son for three weeks. You didn't want his COVID jacket? I didn't know what the yeah, fuck we didn't was know. wrong with him. We, that's what I'm saying. It was the he scariest was, he time. He couldn't even open his eyes. And when he did, it was like his eyes was on fire. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? That is, that, they yeah. rolled him out of the jail in his uniform in a rollaway chair. And yeah. parked him on the curb like he was, like he was trash. Mm. Wow. I stood there and waited for the ambulance, but I stayed back. I was like, I'm not picking him up. He ain't getting in my motherfucking car. What y'all do to him? Mm. It was so funny because <laughs> now that my son is okay, the prison was hollering 
out of the jail. I hope you die, you fat fuck. Because they didn't like my son. Because like all this was happening across from the prison where they could see No, no, see no. It was happening in the, at in the, the prison. Oh, okay. So they could see at the wonder. So they was all yelling. And I was like, why they don't like you? Well, my son, I think my son was an asshole. But my son followed the rules. You couldn't get him to do nothing or break the rules. He took right, his job right. serious. But they all along was yelling, you died, you fat fuck. <laughs> and they rolled him off and he was gone for three weeks and he came back 40 pounds lighter. Oh, my God. Well, I'm glad he's okay. Oh, he's fine. Now. He eat COVID now. He sprinkles it on his... Yes, he don't lose any weight when he So that's it. one of the prison things is that there's like good guards, bad guards. There's deals yes. being made. You're trading uh, goods and... You know, cigarettes and stuff. Is that all true? That's true. My son said, my son has some funny prison stories. One time he told me, he said, they caught one guard on, on tape and um, they asked her, they said, are you smuggling stuff into the jail? So they was fine, all right. And she said, I'm not, why you keep taking a prison in the mop cloth? She said, I'm not smug smuggling anything in the jail. I'm sucking dick. <laughs> but she was. That was her defense. <laughs> but that's what she was doing. She yeah. was there sucking all the prisoners' dicks. For what? I don't know. She likes sucking dick. And she wasn't that cute, so she figured she had as many men as she wanted. So she went, she got the job to suck dick. Can we please? I don't understand. A woman's just like, God, I got to suck I, a lot of dick. I, How I, do I do it? <laughs> I know. I'll become a prison guard and just tell, like, word will get around. Like, meet me in the broom closet? In the broom closet. For no goods or anything, just I, for the love of the game? <laughs> My son had the funniest fucking prison story. He used to come home and tell me that crap. I would laugh till I piss on myself sometimes. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Okay, when you were there, did you, this is a dumb question, but did you absolutely hate it? Was it the worst? Um... It was just, you couldn't go anywhere. It was a bunch of lesbian stuff going down. And I was in prison. You know, I went to jail real young, like 8, 17. Yeah. So I couldn't understand the That's whole not thing. juvie? You weren't regular? No. Back, when, crack, when crack hit America, they ch <clears throat> and it's turned violent, they changed going to jail from the age of 18 to 17. Oh, wow. Because so many. And then when, when crack first came to America, you could go to jail for crack and have a bond that day. It was so bad, they wasn't letting drugs deal back out on the street. You had to apply for a bond. Mm. So when I finally, I, I I got in trouble for selling crack, and then I ended up uh, on probation. I violated my probation. But while I was there, it was just a bunch of lesbian stuff. Like, people I went to school with, I was like, why are you gay? Well, there ain't nothing else in here to do. Well, I don't want anybody to eat my pussy. Prison gay. Yeah, prison gay. It was a bunch of that. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever seen a hermaphrodite. Mm. Now, that scared the shit out of me. A herma are we doing hermaphrodite? I'm from, I'm pronouncing it wrong. And I'm, I'm looking to K to see if we still use that term. It's a person who has both sets of genitalia. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I said I'm, I'm 50 years old. So that's what it was called when I was in prison. Oh, I don't. So I, she I actually a, think we're not sure, but yeah. it's not like an obvious mistake. I think you're in the clear. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first time I ever seen a woman like that. Yeah. And she would show it to, her and every she would fuck everybody, oh and she also had three nipples. Well, I swear my hand to God, this lady had three fucking nipples. And I, I'm telling you, she had a nipple in both spots, and then she had a nipple growing at the bottom. And she loves to show it. Oh, no. She had three nipples, and she was a hermaphrodite. I had never seen any. And I'm young, and I'm like, well, why you got a, it was a little dick that didn't grow all the way out. Yeah. And they never cut it off. Sure. And it wasn't her click, because she had that, too. And three nips. And she had three nipples. This is a hard area to riff on, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you what I saw. I know. But she, but she fucked everybody in jail. Yes. I fought a lot when I was in there. Like physical fights. Yeah. For what? Um, Did you feel like you had to? See, that's another prison thing. Like, you have to fight. You can't take any shit. Well, you can't take any shit. So but what I does that mean? Some I, I'm I'm in prison and some dude slaps my food out of my tray out oh, of my hand. Oh, you're gonna be forever picked on. Unless you fucking fight back. Unless I You gain some respect. Right then. Right then. Like I can't like plan it and be like, I can't like my food's no. on the ground. I'm like, all right, we'll see who's laughing tomorrow. No, none of that shit. I have to do it right now. You will then. be fucked, Pete. Let me ask you this. He slaps it out of my hand. I'm picturing a weird white supremacist guy, big motherfucker. Mm -hmm. He slaps it out, 
and I fight him and I lose, did I still gain some respect? A little bit with an ass whipping. Okay. Better than uh, just taking the disrespect. I think it's better than taking a disrespect. Because I'm going to lose, but I'm at least I'm going to like flail around. And what if I do some something crazy like I pee on him or something? <laughs> you might gain a girl, a boyfriend. Which way? Is it my? <laughs> I don't know how you like it, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know if you mean like, okay, let's get off that subject. That's yeah. a weird one. But it's true that you have to fight and not take I mean, shit. you have to defend yourself. And what, what was the first fight you got in in prison? I had so many, but I, the one I remember is like this crackhead came in off the street and this lady kind of like mentally, I would say somewhere was wrong with her. Yeah. And I was on the phone. Back in those days, you could talk on the phone. And if you wanted to extend the call, I think you just mash a button and they keep going, but they keep charging you by the minutes. And so You're I was on, on the phone. phone. Yeah, pay phone. Yeah, yeah. They was all in this in the jail cell. Mm. And I was on the phone for a really long time. And uh, I think she wanted me to get off the phone. And so I, we got into it. So the next day while I'm on the phone, somebody, uh, while I'm on the phone, she go upstairs and she pour out all my shampoo and shit. All my, throw all my shit around in my room. And so... Um, so the cells are just open during the day? Well, during the day, they open. I At night, like they that. lock everybody in with their roommates. Okay. So you could be in your room if you You could want. be in your room if you wanted to. But you weren't there. You're on the phone. So I'm she on goes the phone. and fucks with your And so somebody closet. told me to turn around. So she tells me, she says... Um, <laughs> She, she, somebody said, Pat, she's standing behind you. You know, turn around. She got an ink pen. And so I turn around, and me and this bitch get to fight. And she was tall. She probably was your height. And you see how short I am, and I was a lot smaller. I've never fought anybody to the point where I was like, God, can y'all please break us up? I was so fucking tired of fighting this big old bitch. Because every time I had to jump up and grab her by her hair, and we, I was going to throw her over the pole. It was like, you know, in, in prison, you got her upstairs and you got her downstairs. Yeah, like a mall. And, yeah, so I was going to throw her over the banister. And my mind said, if you do that, you ain't never getting out of here if that bitch don't make it. Right. And so I pulled her back over the pole, and I'm just hitting this crackhead and hitting this crackhead. And she's not feeling it. She just keep coming back for more. And I was like, what the fuck is the guard? But the guard up there and the one just watching the fucking fight. So finally they come over and break the shit up, right? And then they throw us outside uh, on the basketball court on different sides. And, you know, I'm in Georgia. Mosquitoes ate our ass up. <laughs> Did she have the ink pen as a weapon? Yeah, as a weapon. She was going to stab you with it. They said she was going to stab me with it, so I turned around and just started swinging. Because, yeah, that's scary. Because you weren't going to put your fucking hand on me in jail. The whole respect issue. Well, I was young. Back in the day, I didn't give a fuck. You know, when you're young, you don't think you can die. All you do is fucking fight. You act a fool. Yeah. And that, that was my whole mentality. It's the first 10 minutes of the movie Creed. You, you seen haven't seen it? Creed? No, it, it's not out yet. Creed 1. Well, I can't remember that for a back peak. God damn, I'm well, 50. opens in prison and he's fighting a bunch of people. And then, oh. and then uh, the mom from the Cosby can I, show I know we got to go, but can I tell you oh, what Oh, we I ain't going to go. We're just going to go to the minerals. We're not done. Oh, let me tell you, are, are you what I saw right? last night. What was that movie? Felicia Rashad. Cocaine it, Bear. Because if it was Creed, I'd be like, you should It was not Creed. That. I'm going to see Creed. And I don't go to the movie. I saw Cocaine Bear last night. You saw night. Cocaine Bear? Oh. Did you love it? Fuck no. Oh. <laughs> That was the stupidest fucking movie. And I hate to say that. Tell me. I was, my, you know what, it looks, the previews look so fucking good to Cocaine Bear. Yeah. It was the dumbest shit. Then it scared me. It ended up being kind of like a scary movie. It was scary. So it's based on a true story. Only part was true was the cocaine got dropped out of a plane. And I, I think a bear did it and died. That's yeah, what but I he did it true. and died. Yeah, but it, well, they're like, what if he got really high and killed people? And that's what he did. Yeah. It was the dumbest shit. I mean, I've seen people on cocaine, but nobody do this much cocaine in one day. This motherfucker was eating kilos of cocaine. Yeah. I mean, it never turned into the second day, the third day. Uh, this bear ate like 12 fucking kilos of cocaine. Im fucking possible. One kilo would have killed him. Also, why does he want to kill everybody if he's feeling high on cocaine? Shouldn't he have just tried to have sex with a lady bear and lost his erection? <laughs> yeah, well, then he, then he tried to get some dick or pussy, whatever he was. Try to or get a gold necklace or something or a, da a disco. I, I don't know, Pete, but it, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm riffing off of what people usually do on cocaine. Oh, well. Spend that ain't money, what he go it dancing, was the dumbest shit. lose their erections. I, I wanted to laugh, but I was like, what the fuck is but going on? But then it got on? legit scary. 
Well, when he was ripping people kneecaps off and shit. Yeah, that's not fun. And I mean, but I'm sitting there knowing, knowing somebody who's dead with cocaine. I don't give a fuck if you is a bear. You can't eat no block of cocaine and just be running around hunching on people. This goddamn bear ate like 12 things of cocaine. I mean, duffel bags of cocaine. It's a lot of cocaine. It's going to kill a bear. And he wasn't dead at the end. <laughs> Him and his kids was on cocaine. Oh, no. So I guess they couldn't Spoiler. kill the bear in the Spoiler. movie. You couldn't kill the bear in the movie because of Peter was like, oh, my God, you could at least sit the bear to rehab. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what Peter more, was saying. Like, more like uh, uh, their agent named Peter was saying there's going to be a cocaine bear too. I mean, this is clearly going to make money. That's well, I went to go see it. It looked so good. I was like, but it wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah. I tried to watch Brendan Fraser in The Whale last night. I'm not saying it's not good, but it was so heavy that I was like, he dropped a key and he's trying to get it with his like pincher claw thing. Yeah, have you seen The Whale? He's a, He's in a big, 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 big prosthetic uh, fat suit. No, what are you talking about? Brendan Fraser. It's a new he movie. got swallowed by a whale? No, no, no. It's called The Whale. And he's a big dude. And that's why it's called The Whale. But like around the part where he's just trying to pick up a key mm -hmm. with pinches. Well, I can't pick up my keys. Well, I don't want to see a movie of that either. So what? You was feeling sorry because he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't pick up his fucking thing? <laughs> I... What? <laughs> Fat people don't tie their shoes. That's why they buy slip on. Oh my God! Will you stop it? You're killing me. So Brandon Fraser is fat and what? He's really, really big, mm -hmm. and he couldn't pick up a key. And it wasn't that it was that horrible, but I was like, I'm about to go to bed. I don't want to have dreams that I can't pick up a key for eight, for eight hours. It was just it was a heavy movie, but I laughed at myself. I was like, What did you expect? What did you think it was going to be? Is it it's, out in the theaters? You can rent. You can buy it. It's also in theaters. Yeah. Oh, I might have to check that one out. Yeah, it'll it'll solve the problem. I that mean, cocaine I'm bear fat. I can't bend over sometimes. He's like I, nine, nine years. I mean, he's he's a he's real big. He's like Gilbert Grape. Remember what's eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah, it was like that a, was a that woman, big. right? That's Gilbert Grape's mom. What's she eating? That was, that was a better better title. She was a very big woman. That's the one they told her on the side of the house to get her out. That's right. But in the will... Did they ever put her on a diet? I don't remember because it wasn't really about her. Was it? I'll say in the will, it shows him eating a lot. Because, you know... Did he lose the weight? I don't know. I, I, I left around the key part. <laughs> you was at the theater? No, no, no. I bought it. I was home alone. Because Val, my wife doesn't want to watch it. So I was like, I want to watch this. And I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying it was it was very heavy. It was a little bit like Cocaine Bear was scary. Well, Whale is sadder than than they made it look. Cocaine Bear was it was it scared me in some points, but it was not as funny as it looked like it was gonna be. Right. And um, I wanted to see a little bit more story than the bear just ripping everybody apart. Yeah. So you know, what's what are his dreams? <laughs> what are his hopes? I just wanted it. It didn't do it for me. I understand, but I, I, I we went. You know, I'm uh, 43. I have a daughter. People are like you want to see Cocaine Bear. I'm like, no, <laughs> just just flat out no. I'm gonna watch half of the whale. Well, I'm gonna go check out the whale because you know I want to get back into going to movie theaters. Yeah, you know, and then I get to AMC here. Sure. Um, at Nicole the Grove. Kidman. How about they fucking nachos? Was the the cheese was cold. <sighs> and they had no survivor skill of how to make them hot. I'm like, ma'am, go go pop it in the microwave. Go soak it in some hot water. Give me my fucking nacho. I'm going to the bathroom and run some hot water over it. I'm sorry, but if nacho cheese isn't hot, that's just a that's a that's a hate crime. That's an assault. Oh, it was fucking horrible. Yeah, no, it's terrible. All right, let's go to the mid rolls, and then when we come back, I want to hear a little bit about your show and how it happened, the Miss Pat show. Okay, which I'm still hoping to come on. You coming, Pete? All I right. got you. All right. We'll be right back. Pardon the interruption, weirdos. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Sunday, Sunday Lawn Care. I don't know if you're like me. You love spring, but you may not love figuring out how the heck. I'm going to add the heck. How the heck do you take care of your yard? I have no clue. Does anyone else just stand there in the store wondering where to start? feeling intimidated and afraid to ask somebody at the store wearing an apron to help you? 
That's where Sunday Lawn Care comes in. Sunday is everything you need to get the lawn you have dreamed of. We're talking healthy. We're talking lush. We're talking easy to do, no brainer stuff. They take all the guesswork out of it. So this spring, go to getsunday.com slash weird and enter your address to get a customized plan. It's so cool. They find where you are and they give you a customized plan created just for your lawn. Not every lawn, your lawn and the conditions of your home. No trips to the store are hauling heavy bags since they ship straight to your home. You just need a hose to apply Sunday. It's actually fun. You screw it on, you spray it on. It goes on the hose. Leela actually loves helping me do it. We spray it everywhere. You can fertilize your whole lawn in less time than it takes to watch an episode of your favorite TV show. And they only use ingredients you feel good about. You can feel good about and you do feel good about. That means no harsh chemicals, no long waiting periods or trying to keep your kids and your pets off the lawn. Simply apply let it dry and you're back to just enjoying your yard which is what you should do sunday is easy and affordable some lawn care services cost more than fifteen hundred dollars a year but sunday's full season plans start at just a hundred and nine dollars and sunday is offering weirdos our listeners 20 percent off full season plans start at just 109 dollars, and you can get 20 percent off when you visit get sunday dot com slash weird at checkout. That's 20% off your custom plan at getsunday.com slash weird. This episode is brought to us by BetterHelp. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. I've sought out therapy in times of transition, whether it's moving, whether it's changing a job situation, whether it's changing a relationship. Uh, That's often when I've craved and needed talk therapy more than other times in my life. And therapy is about deepening your self-awareness and your understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. We say this on the show all the time. Talk therapy is one of those things that is greater than the sum of its parts. It seems like two people talking in a room, but when it's a professional who knows how to listen, how to actively listen and to guide and coax you into the right areas, it is absolutely life-changing. And BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. It's never been easier. Therapy has absolutely changed my life. It's changed Val's life, obviously for the better, or I wouldn't be talking about it right now. It's it's like a catharsis. It's guidance. It's everything that you're that you're hoping it will be. I promise talk therapy can really make a huge difference in your life, especially at a time of transition or change. And when aren't we in a time of change? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire or get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash weirdo. Support your mind, your mental health, and show some support for the show. It means a lot. Go to betterhelp.com slash weirdo weirdo. Last but not least, we're brought to us by our friends at Ritual Multivitamin. You guys know I record these intros often when I'm traveling on the road, and I always demonstrate that Ritual, I take lots of different supplements at lots of different times in my life, but Ritual are the only ones that make it into the (laughs) carry-on. I never travel without them. I never miss a day. I take their uh, probiotic, and I take their daily men's multivitamin and I have the doctor checkups to show this stuff works. It gets into your system. You don't just pee it out. I hear a lot of people dismissing uh, multivitamins because it just goes through your system. Ritual has a delayed release formula so it doesn't break down until it's in your lower intestine, which is how your body can absorb that stuff. All that stuff, you know what I'm saying? The nutrients, the nutrients. In Ritual's case, the traceable nutrients. They'll tell you where these nutrients are coming from, which is incredible. Added to which, they have prebiotic, postbiotic, and uh, probiotics in one in their Symbiotic Plus, which I take every single day. 
We always talk about how important gut health is. It's basically like a second brain, and keeping that healthy is so important for so many major body functions and your overall wellness. So you can talk fantasy football with your friends all day, but asking them for health advice, not the move. Ritual takes the guesswork out of the vitamin game. Their multivitamin for men is based on science to help fill common nutrient gaps in their diet and level up your nutrition, your nutrient goals. It's an all around win. It is scientifically developed multivitamin of high quality ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. Ritual is your new type of two a days. Help supporting heart health with omega-3 DHA to normal muscle function and normal immune function with vitamin D3. This small step can have a huge major impact. It's made traceable because uh, knowing where your nutrients come from is just as important as what they're for. It's vegan friendly, non-GMO, sugar free, gluten free, major allergen free. And if that, as if that wasn't enough, their minty essence in every bottle keeps things tasting fresh and makes taking your multis every day actually enjoyable. Enjoyable. So Essential for Men is a quality multivitamin from a company you can actually trust and get this ritual is offering weirdos 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash weird to start ritual or add Essential for Men to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash weird. Do your body a favor, do your gut a favor, and show your support of the show. It means a lot. All right, everybody, let's get back to Miss Pat. And we're instantly back. Tell me a little bit about how the Miss Pat show came about. I mean, we we were just in prison fighting a, a woman who was on uh, crack cocaine, and she's going to stab you with a pen. Mm-hmm. It's a long way from uh, having your show be Emmy nominated, going yes. into the third season. Yes. What is going on? Um, how did it happen? I, I honestly, podcast made it happen. I did a po- I get I did Mark Marin podcast, uh-huh. and um, right after that, I did Rogan. And from Mark Marin podcast, I sold a book, and I sold. I mean, I got audition. I mean, people called me in and said, "Hey, I want to give you Will a you show." You write a book? Oh uh, no, really? Yeah, at the same a that book and a show at the same time. So, but wow. it still took five years to get the show on TV. From this podcast, you'll get a ten minute spot at the Belly Room. Okay, we're well, good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Peter already had that tonight, <laughs> so I can't even give you what you don't already have. So, so you did, Marin. You told your story. They were like, "Please put that in a book." Then you said, then you did Rogan, and someone's like, please make that well, into a show. Well, I will say this. I did Ari, and a lady heard me and said, I think I can get you a book deal. Well, we had started working on the book deal, and we released Marin, and then the uh, the publishers came along and bought the book. But at that time, Hollywood started. I had six interviews after that to come mm-hmm. on to just talk about, you know, to just try to see if I had anything. Yeah. And, um... I signed with one company. Nine months later, that didn't work out. And imagine these are for TV shows. TV shows. No, imagine Ron Howard company picked me up. Yeah. And said, "I think we can develop something with you." So they brought Lee Daniel on the project, and um, we. It took a little time. I went through a few writers. I finally got a writer that understood the projects, and then we wrote a pilot. We sold it to Hulu. Hulu shot it. Said, "Hell no!" And we waited. And how did? It, how was that? Don't don't gloss over that. That must have been painful. That wasn't painful. No, no. I'm, I mean, I, I'm a. I come from a background where I'm. I, I'm conditioned to hear no. When you say yeah, that's when I like. What the fuck you say? <laughs> so that's what you don't know what to do. With. I. It's a protective mode for me. Sure, sure. Because so many times in life, people have let me down. So I expect for you to say no. So when you say yes, I'm shocked. Right. So when Hulu picked it up and they shot it. And, you know, it, it wasn't, they felt like it wasn't for their platform. Mm. But I have to, I always have to thank Hulu because they helped us create such a great pilot. Yeah. When we took it out again and BET Plus looked at it, they automatically bought it. Wow. So it was the same pilot. You didn't reshoot the pilot. No, we didn't reshoot the pilot. But didn't it briefly go to Fox there too? Well, for, well I tell you, after Lee Daniel, what you call it, uh, at the time, uh, Empire was the biggest thing on TV. So Fox gave me the deal. And when I, the third writer came along, he told them that I should be on streaming and I should you shouldn't censor me. So we took it over to Hulu. Oh, because Fox is going to be... You know how Fox A lot is. less motherfuckers. And, yeah, yeah. Every, all of that. Lo- yeah. I mean, even with the, even with the content. Even with the content. Even with the content. You know, yeah. we did... 
This second season. I thought you it, said cunt tease, and I'm gonna be honest. Cunt tease? Because I was like, you can't say motherfucker, and you're like, you can't say cunt tease, but you were saying content. Yeah, content. <laughs> so, you know, like I did an abortion episode. Right. Where I'm in my I'm in my late 50. I'm in my I'm 50 years old and I get an abortion while I'm still married. Fox ain't going for that. Right. Right. So, you know, t- some TV just like to tie shit up in a bow. We don't do that over there. We, we If we talking about something, we going to talk about it. Right, right. The way real people should talk about it. Right. So, um, you know, we went to Hulu, and after they shot it, they said no, and BET Plus picked it up. And at first I was a little worried. There was a new platform. Mm. I had never heard of BET Plus. Yeah. And um, after doing some research, and I just told my co-creator, I said, look, if it's good, people going to come. Two things, and I say this all the time, two things in this world I've never seen a commercial for is crack and Waffle House. And they're both doing fine. They're both going to sell. They've been <laughs> doing fine for years. So I said, if we put crack and put a little cheese and eggs and they crack, we good. We, we, got, we got a recipe. And that's what we did. And it, each year it catch on more and more and more. Right. And didn't you do multiple seasons? Like, what, didn't they buy multiple seasons or something's going on where you got picked up for two seasons at yeah, once? Yeah, I did, I did season two. And then in the middle of that, they came in and they did season three. Mm-hmm. And so at after season one, I ended up getting an overall deal with Viacom and BET+. Plus. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. It's incredible. And how has your life changed? I mean, this is a new level of success. You've been... Poor, you've been breaking into houses to steal diapers, selling. But you, and now people you're don't understand. I've house. always had money. I sold crack. <laughs> I I did a lot of crazy shit in my life to get money. You, you mean you weren't hurting when you were selling crack? You were doing okay. I was doing really fucking well. <laughs> I made a lot of fucking money. I mean, you really were. I made so, a lot of fucking money. W- where were you in the in the food chain of drug dealing? You weren't just working the street then. You were distributing? Oh, no. no. I, w- I was making a lot of money. You were making the deals with the importers or the people? Uh, people are making crack. People cook crack. Well, I cook. You cook your own crack. You cook crack. your own crack. Yes. You okay. Cook. It's, it's no such thing as you cook the powder, which yeah. is a white people drug. Right. And you turn it into crack. Right. Do you know that you can get more time for crack say, yeah. than you can powder cocaine absolutely which is uh institutionalized racism it's like normalized racism because powder is for you we don't use powder that's right black people smoke crack yeah i don't like that i'm the example of whiteness but i mean i'm just saying that you're sitting across from yeah i know i get it if there was another white guy we could have gestured well i can say her then she's katie says you want to loves going skiing if you know what i mean what she does a lot of coke I don't believe that. She has to listen to all these podcasts? You think she's doing that? I think she's doing dry? Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, she's That's doing, what I think she's, she's doing. She's doing regular Itali- if, if, Italiano crack. If yeah. she was doing uh, cocaine, she wouldn't have no teeth. She has really nice that's teeth. That's right. We know that for a fact. Is that your wife? Pulled. No, that's Katie. Oh. Well, well damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's her official title. That's Katie. <laughs> God damn. No, that's Katie. <laughs> I didn't mean it as an insult. <laughs> Katie, I ain't going to ask you if you're a boy or girl. Not in this society. <laughs> that's Katie. Katie is a AFAB, assigned female at birth, and she's been our producer for over 10 years. Oh, great, Katie. Nice to meet you. So you were making a lot of money mm-hmm. making your own crack. I was not making my own crack. You said you cooked it. Yeah, you cooked it. It came you in a powder form. It. Yes. You got the cocaine. Mm-hmm. Here's a question. Why make it into crack? Because black people didn't do powder. We care about our nose. That's why? Because you'd rather know. smoke something than... Well... Because you can freebase the powder, can't you? It was just not... It, it's marketing, really. Like, it just wasn't really introduced. I don't know if the high was better. Yeah. I don't know, because I've never I've never done, you know, cocaine or crack. Right. But it, it was just something, you know, black people wasn't into. Right. When I, when I, as far as I can remember back, it was always crack. Which, I'm not an expert on the history, but it, it did seem like in a deliberate attack on impoverished black communities. It's like, let's do that. Let's, let's flood it in and make a lot of arrests. And like you said, you, you, well, were- you gave, I think you gave the black community something the poor, poor black people wasn't used to, which was money. They was able to buy better things, do better things, live a little bit better. You mean the, the dealers? The dealers. Yeah. And then that's when you saw the killing came along. It was all set up. Right. You know, because, I mean, think about this. Well, you, I, I don't know how old you are, but 43. the black father was never removed from the household until crack hit the black community. Tell me. You never heard we didn't have a daddy. Everybody had a daddy. 
black men went to work all the time. Right. Soon as crack hit the black community, it destroyed the black homes. Mm. And you feel like that was intentional. I mean, you wouldn't be the only well, one. Well, so we as black people feel like that was intentional. Right. It was by design. Yes. I mean, it's, it's uh, the same way as gentrification. When they come in and they want you to, the black people is like, it, it's in Baltimore, in Atlanta. We need that. We need that city, you know, so they can control the fucking state. Right. You get a, you get all of those poor black people out of Atlanta. That's a big ass conk of, this, of the state. Right, right. And it's also of like. city. This, it seems like there's this belief that there has to be somebody at the bottom. So whoever's at the bottom, keep them at the bottom. Does that, is that part of the theory? It's like, let's... Because it, you it was already a community that was struggling, right? Well, yeah. And then you flood it to keep it down. You know what I mean? Like, it, make mm -hmm. it worse. You know, I just saw this thing on TV. I'm, I, I'm driving it stress. I don't know I why. I saw this though. thing on TikTok. And this guy was speaking. I don't know if y'all ever seen it, but he was saying... Uh, it was a white dude telling the story. He said, rich people come into poor neighborhood and buy buildings and leave them condemned so they can drive down the value of the neighborhood. Mm. So if they drive it so low, they can continue to buy, or they'll buy shit and let it go raggedy. And they'll drive down the value of the neighborhood. And when they do that, they can get everything in that neighborhood for free. So if you really did your research on a lot of those condemned buildings in the ghetto, they're oh. owned by sometimes one company or one person. Wow. And as they do that, they bring down the value to say, oh, this is a ghetto. And then the city just start giving you shit. Well, hey, we'll give you this. We'll give you this. We'll give you this to fix it up. Right. When it was always somebody behind it driving down the value of the black community. That's sinister. Yeah, that's really devilish. Horrible. Welcome to America. Welcome well, yeah, into the camera, please. Welcome, Welcome to, to America, America with Miss Pat. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's dark shit. And mm -hmm. you do, you tackle stuff like that on the show. I've seen, I haven't seen every episode, but you go after... Uh, police uh, violence, murder, all that stuff. We we have not did one police brutality, have we? There was a joke about it. Oh, no, it was you school say shooting. The, no, no, you said you can, black people don't buy lottery tickets. Oh yeah, that was familiar? a bit I wrote. I can't even remember. Yeah. Like, oh, I said oh, it was it was in my uh, monologue. I said black people. Um, I thought you said it on the airplane. Because then the woman. Oh yeah, you. the woman said next to me. It was a, that was a, actually a bit. So when I was creating the show, I moved to Plainfield, Indiana, and I lived in that little white neighborhood. And I used to I used to fly Southwest all the time, mm -hmm. and so I like to talk to people just to see what they think. And I don't judge you if you if you vote or believe in whatever. It's just a conversation. And I think as Americans, it's the things that we could we we should do more of. We can get a better understanding. Mm -hmm. I don't say you racist because you vote for Trump. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to think of something is wrong with me because I vote a certain way. I think no matter which way we vote or believe in, we should be able at to the talk. end, yeah. we should be able to respect each other. I agree. So I, when I used to fly Southwest, I would always say... <laughs> Southwest, seat. the place where you can have those conversations. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. I, so I was like A+, plus, right? Get on a plane first. And I would always block off a seat for... A white person. Oh, I'm not lying. For somebody that did not look like that, I would talk to them daily. But usually it would strongly be white means. Every time, every now and then I would get a vocal white woman. Yeah. But I would block off the, the seat, act like I'm waiting on somebody. And as they come down the aisle, I catch my victim. And once, I mean, and I would, I, you know, I start off as a regular conversation. And then we'll get into life or we'll get into religion. Because I'm, I'm an easy person to talk to. Yeah, you are. And so that's how that whole bit came about. Was the lottery bit? With the, yeah, the lottery bit and sitting on the you plane. You said that them. to someone? Yeah, that was I, I made a bit out of that. Yeah, but it's based on something you said on a Southwest yes. flight. Mm -hmm. Tell the people what you said because I know what you said, but they don't know. What I you can't said. remember the bit. You said, well, I don't want to say it, but no, I, say I'll it. say it. You said black people don't buy lottery tickets; they just wait on until, the police to shoot your yeah. child, uh, and then maybe you'll get an eight million dollar settlement. Yeah, and then and, and then, then they'll, they'll tax it. it. Yep, that yeah. was a, that was. A it's bit. a very dark thing, but it's a way of addressing something that's it's very true. It's, we right. they kill all kids, you know, the police, you know, and and I look, I try to look at it both ways. I say this to a police officer: think about if that was your child, somebody was shooting. Mm -hmm. Would you want your child to be treated the way you see? These black kids. I don't give a fuck if he did run from you. I don't give a fuck. You're a police officer. Right, right. Your whole thing is to take a man alive and make sure you're okay, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I can see if somebody's trying to harm you, but goddamn, you shoot somebody for having a cell phone in their hand 55 right. times. 
right. that's a problem. Right. But no, but this what's wrong with this country and this world? I believe nobody ever put themselves in that situation. That's right. That's that's the core of the problem. Is yeah. we we forgot that we belong to each other. Yes. Yeah, so would you want somebody treating your child that way? Right. Would you want somebody beating the dog shit out of your child, shooting your child like that? That's so when, when I made that whole bit and I opened it up with that because I tried to give the other two writers that, but they wouldn't listen to me. Mm. But I'm like, we can be funny, but we can also be sending a message. But we ain't got to hit. Miss Pat Show don't, it's not a teaching moment for white people. Mm. It's a teaching moment for all of us. Mm -hmm. Even when I did the non-binary episode, it was because my daughter is gay and my other daughter had a friend like that and I had never heard of the word non-binary. Mm -hmm. And when she said she was neutral gender, what is it? Gender, gender neutral. neuter. What gender is neutral. <laughs> gender neuter is very different. I, I said, well, <laughs> why are you neutral gender? Neutrogena. Neutrogena. Yeah. Damn and, and, Gina. Yeah. Martin. Martin Lawrence. Will no, Smith. Slap. Neutrogena Chris Rock. Neutrogena shampoo. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Pouring out the shampoo, we're back in prison? Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's just something that, you know, it's, it's hard conversation. We, we yeah, but should... humor can help. Yes. When you do it funny, I'm sure the Southwest flight was the same. You can, you have a specific talent, spider, of uh, addressing things in a tiny baby little spider. You should have killed it. Oh, he's, he's definitely hobbling. I went like that. That was huge for him. That was like a but tsunami. In three weeks, he's going to be so big. But anyway, keep going. <laughs> I was just trying to give you the compliment that you are so funny. There's a lot of things that you can tackle and address for a lot of people to watch and enjoy. Yes. That that it's very hard to do. Nobody can do that. Very, very few people can do it. And you're very special in that way. We're almost out of time, which I hate. But what do you think about God real quick? <laughs> God? Yeah, God. I, we talked about God tricking you a lot. What I, what is your God? Do you think life is over when we die? Do you do you pray? Tell me tell me a I little bit. I don't pray a lot. I I, not, I I don't I never read the Bible. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a I, snooze, but yeah. Well, you know, it's man made. So Second it's, 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 it's a way to control the population of people on earth. I truly believe. And I, yeah, I, I believe some of it is real, but um I do think there's something bigger than all of us out in the universe. Do you think you've been here before? I think all of us is. I think we're recycled. Yeah, I agree. I, agree I cause you know what? I was looking on Facebook, mm. and so they have this thing where they show you that people before you. You ever seen that? And they have all of these famous black actors. People before you? Yeah, like like to show you you've been here before, and then they show you how people in Africa really looked. Jasmine, what does that mean? <laughs> no, 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 no. They show you like they show you a picture of. Denzel Washington. Yeah. Then a hundred years ago, they'll show you somebody that was straight out of a trial. They look just like, like Denzel. Denzel Washington. Yeah, yeah, same explain. face. Same yeah, face. same face. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I do think we all are recycled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly I mean, can... God's running out of face ideas. I'll give him that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just like, I don't know, that fucking face again. And if you're going to redo one, Denzel's a good choice. Yeah, but you I know just... that dude 300 years ago, people were like, man, that's a symmetrical face. But I, I, I truly believe we all been here before. I think yeah. we all recycle. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a hell or a heaven. I right. think we just out there floating. Come back. I mean, and I think we all come back. That's got to make you less afraid to die, though. You're just like, well, this I mean, is the only game I, in town, and we're just going to keep doing it. I, re I accepted it. I, I have accepted we all going to die. But I don't know if I don't know if hell is real. I don't know if heaven is real. Uh, you know. When I was little, you had the last step on the wall. I just pray that God has upgraded that dinner to a Chick-fil-A in heaven because I know I'm coming. <laughs> Nobody want them shitty grapes that was on that plate on the last supper. Nobody wants to yeah, eat that. Yeah, Jesus, this that, is your last supper? Yeah, Could we get that a... That bread with no fucking preservatives in it. Nobody wants that. I just hope it's a, I hope it's a yellow brick road of fast food and we can just fucking live. There you go. But I truly believe that we all been here before. I love that. Let me ask you this, our final question. Uh, can you tell me, this flew by, by the way, you're such a talent and such a pleasure to talk to, and I really hope I get to be on your show only to hang out with you. You can cut I, me out. I know. I've been, I've been <laughs> cut screaming. Cut the scenes out. No, no. I w I've been screaming. Hey, we got to get Pete Lee on this show. <laughs> we got to get Pete Lee on this show. Pete Holmes, and, I mean, not Pete Lee. Get oh that God. Pete Lee out of here. I don't, I don't know why I'm thinking of Pete Lee. It's fine. Pete Holmes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get Pete Holmes on this show. And you work with Patrick Walsh. Yeah, that's my boy. Yes. Yeah. So Patrick is a writer the on the greatest. show. I know. And he says it's a true, and he's right. He's, he's very proud of it. 
You know what? I, we brought Patrick. I mean, we brought Patrick over to BET, and he has just fell in love. Yeah. We he is BT plus he has just That's fell right. in love. I, I love it. me some Patrick. You Wash. should like if you're ever bored, listen to him on this podcast because he tells these stories you wouldn't believe. Really? He told me he stories. did stand up before, and he's done it a couple times. Yeah, yes, he's very he good. told me. He just, I, for some reason he's not he doesn't have the bug to like do it all the time, but when he does it, I've seen him do it. It's very good. He's very funny. Good, not good. a surprise. The question I have for you here at the end: Pete Holmes, not Pete Lee. Yes, Pete Holmes is coming on my show, and not Pete Coriel. I don't not know who the Pete fuck Pete Davidson. That is. I don't not, know who that is either. Um, there are other Pete. Peter Pan? Not Peter Pan. Although I've been known to go out a few windows. What does that mean? Listen, <laughs> I don't know what it meant, <laughs> but it could mean so many things and none of them are good. Okay. Um, can you tell me the time in your life you laugh the hardest? It doesn't have to be a great story, but if you're like worried you're going to throw up, you're laughing so hard, tears going down your face. Maybe you're a kid. Maybe somebody fell. Maybe somebody farted. Maybe somebody slipped. Maybe your brother got shot at. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> My mama uh, had one leg because she lost her leg to diabetes mm. real early. And so she used to get a Social Security check once a month. We didn't have a car at the time. So she would catch a cab because there was no Uber back in these days to the bank. Have the man sit there all day to the bank, to the check deposit in the bank. It was a social security check. And a lot of time it didn't come to after 12, but she'll catch the cab at 8 o'clock. And just wait here. Just wait here. Just wait. And I'm like, and I'm saying to myself, I'm young. I'm like, well, bitch, just go to the bank at 1230. You know the check is going to be there. Yeah. So we were sitting outside the bank. It was an African guy. And, um. By the time we get back home, I, y'all, I think the cab is $75. My mom probably got $600 in. She refused to pay that man his Wait, money. she had the cab idling out front of the <laughs> bank, $75 worth? Yes. It probably was more than that. I don't remember. This is not but a good uh, financial a, decision. <laughs> I, thank you. Well, we already fucking poor. And he, 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 she get her check. He take us by the stove. She get a weed and take her back. And she don't want to pay the man. So the man called the police. So by this time, I done got my mama wheelchair out. And, you know, because she, she didn't have a leg on and put her in the wheelchair. The police lock, knock on the door. And he said, ma'am, you, you 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 jumped out of a cab and ran. My mom's like, how the fuck I jump out of a fucking cab? I got one motherfucking leg, police officer. So the police, the police said, my mom, get a man his money. I ain't getting my motherfucking thing. Y'all, he tilt her wheelchair back and say, well, off the jail you go. My mama snatched that money out of her fucking leg and threw it at that cab driver. <laughs> he tilted her back like... This is the easiest way to take a person to prison yeah. ever. Yeah, he about to yeah. roll it down the yes. steps. You know, you just came, you got to tilt the wheelchair back. Like, boo, 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 boo. He tilt that chair back and boy about to take her to that police car. <laughs> Nigga, she pulled that money away from up on that fake socks and <laughs> leg with that sock on it so quick. I hollow. About, about five months later, I call a cab and the cab driver picked me up, right? And he's like, where's your crazy ass mama at? I said, man, she died. <laughs> oh my god Can I also say in your mom's defense This is the 80s uh, This was the 90s 90s? Mm-hmm. Anytime before Uber Cabs were the worst It was so hard to get a cab So that's why she probably wanted this guy no, to No, not in Atlanta We lived in Atlanta It's hard to get one in New York they Oh, I don't even mean own. for the race reasons I just mean calling a cab No, but, that, cab but they was, take... you know, it was really big in Atlanta So it was not Everybody wasn't catching a cab You know, right. you, people was getting their asses on the bus But she couldn't get on the bus Because she had a wheelchair Right, so, right Okay but <laughs> we, Anytime we called them, you know some, Now it's hard to get a fucking cab But Right. Man, that time she was gonna take her ass to jail, and I kept trying to say, "Mama, why are we here at the bank? It was like two hours. <laughs> we was in that car sweating. We have no money for food. We was hot as fuck. And my mama kept having me go in the bank and ask the bank, the check got there yet? The check got there. Yet? Oh my god! <laughs> he did a wheelie. He made your mom do a wheelie in a wheelchair. Boy, she was about to take her black ass to jail that day. Boy, she gave that cab driver his money, and he left the meter running while he called the police. Yeah, that's a smart cab driver right yeah, there. Yeah, and she and I think she was out like a hundred and some bucks. And her check was on like six hundred and some. She like, well, I guess you motherfuckers ain't gonna eat for the rest of the month. I didn't give a fuck. I thought that was a funny shit watching her go to jail. <laughs> oh my God. Miss Pat, thank you. People can watch Miss Pat show on BT Plus. The Pat Down is your podcast. 
Uh, Thank you for being here. Season three is out now. It's out now. It's out right now. And uh, would this is how we end the show. The guest says, keep it crispy. It's just the catchphrase. Would you grace us with a keep it crispy? Uh, keep it crispy, but not fried crispy. <laughs> 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 Thank you for giving us the full meal, not the crumbles. You gave us the full meal today. Thank you. It was I appreciate awesome. That. You're How awesome. the fuck I'm gonna get up out this? I'm gonna help you get out of that thing. What that's magic this? mind. That was a little coffee drink. That's a little water, Nirvana water. You don't you can take them with you. Okay, I All take right. them with me. <laughs> you